Mike LaRocco, a man on a mission to beat the privateers, to beat the factory stars, to win the 250 National Motocross Championship. This is the view of High Point Raceway, Mount Morris, Pennsylvania. Crowds pouring in for round four of the AMA National Motocross Championships. Hello, everyone. I'm Dave Despain, along with David Bailey, the past AMA National Motocross and Supercross champion. In this series for 250s, it's Team Mike. Mike LaRocco out front, Mike Kodrowski chasing. Is it inevitable that one of these Kawasaki riders is going to take the crown? Well, it sure looks that way. I mean, they've got both guys out front by, you know, a whole race. Their next uh, toughest challenger probably would be Jeremy McGrath, and he's got a lot of ground to make up. One guy could possibly have a problem, but I don't think both of them will. Well, there's always the possibility that they'll take each other out. Let me think back. 1986, Red Bud Track and Trail in Michigan, David Bailey and How do you Johnny? remember this stuff? <laughs> Tell me the story. Yeah, well, this was uh, Rick Johnson's birthday, and uh, he had a poor first moto. He's out there leading the second moto. All I really had to do was ride around, and I, Johnny and Mary ran into each other, and... Uh, handed the race to him. So Happy birthday, Archie. You never know what can happen out there, but it looks pretty good, I think, for Kawasaki right now. <laughs> We're going to take a look at the racetrack on which these guys will do battle for national points this afternoon. Dave, the first time I ever raced here was in 1979, and I don't see a lot of difference here. The layout this year looks almost identical. The only thing is they've changed the uh, location of the finish line. This year it's been moved back quite a bit. Over there by that triple jump that you first did. We've seen the battleground. We'll be back with the war right after this timeout. Mike LaRocco, Team Mike on the green bikes, ready to do battle with privateers like Kyle Lewis here at Mount Morris, Pennsylvania. LaRocco leading this championship by mm, a comparatively healthy 17 points. Dowd, Lewis, and Matasevich in a tight battle for top privateer honors. It's proven to be a pretty nice day here. Warm, but not uh, oppressively hot as we prepare for the drop of the gate on the first moto. And we're underway. And woo, right off the bat, we've got trouble at the starting line. Two riders down as the field go hammering off into turn number one. That's Phil Lawrence right there, number 18, factory Suzuki rider. Back on a factory bike and back from injury, but down in the dirt at the start. Jeremy McGrath jumps out front. Hey, looks like Supercross as the reigning Supercross champion on the Honda number two jumps in front of number 19, Michael Craig. A couple of guys we're accustomed to seeing out front. Craig's been up there every race. He's got, uh, boy, I don't think he's seen what looks like to ride around with McGrath. Hopefully he can just kind of fall into his pace. Maybe they'll be able to break away. Well, of course, he won a Supercross race earlier this year. Knows he can run with McGrath indoors. Consistency has been Craig's big problem. For Jeremy, a great run in the last outing at Bud's Creek, Maryland. He obviously got to liking it. The fans cheering him on as he leads the early going here at Mount Morris. A lot of dust out there. Is that going to become a problem as the day wears on? Well, it looks pretty nice there in the groove. I think normally what you'll see is in the first lap or two of the race, everyone's so close together, it tends to bring up the dust. Once they a single file out a little bit, the dust goes down. Question is, where's LaRocco? He's going to be coming through some dust, and uh, it's going to be tough to catch these guys. Now, once again, he has not set the world on fire with his start, but we are getting glimpses of number one, Mike Kodrowski, who got off the gate pretty well. There is number one right there, the national champ. Swaps a little bit coming over the crest of that hill, but closes in on Michael Craig. In the first of two 30-minute races, it'll be a long, hot, and hard day here at Mount Morris. And Kodrowski knows he has his work cut out for him. He needs to build points, and he's got to do it right now. Well, if he glances over his shoulder and notices that he doesn't see LaRocco back there, here's a chance for him to, to make an early move on these guys, hopefully pull away and uh, put some points on them. He's, he's got to do it now. How much do you try to keep track of where everybody else is, and how much do you just put your head down and go to the front? Well, normally you watch the pit board of your mechanic, but on a racetrack like this, as lap times are pretty long, you tend to kind of go on gut instinct. And uh, right here you got a pretty good battle between Mike Jones and Larry Ward. 
That is for fourth and fifth, and as they crest the hill, it looks like Jones has made the pass. Meanwhile, McGrath holds the interval on Craig, and they appear to have gotten away a little bit from Kudrowski, who needs to get up there and put some early pressure on the Honda rider, Jeremy McGrath, who leads over Michael Craig. Jeremy, how about a comparison between this outdoor national stuff and the Supercross series of which you are champ? Well, I mean, outdoor is probably a little bit more scary because you go faster. Uh, there's not as many big jumps, but if you know how to jump, then the Supercross jumps aren't scary. But I think that the outdoor series is tough because we have four weeks on, one week off, and it's usually sometimes five weeks on, but it does get a little monotonous, but I think it breaks it up a little bit. And while Showtime was expounding, look here. Michael Craig under a lot of pressure from number one, Mike Kodrowski, who jumps right by and takes over the number two spot. That was a clean move. He just squared the corner and uh, took the inside, and I think he might have been surprised that Craig didn't double that, or he had the thing planned the whole way. It was a nice move. Anyway, Kodrowski didn't want to be stuck behind Craig and let Jeremy McGrath get away. He needed to make that pass when he did. Most of us have had no doubt about McGrath's ability to run well outdoors. He's proven it over the last couple of weekends, much to the delight of his mechanic, Skip Norfolk. Yeah, every weekend he seems to be getting a little better. Last weekend was a good outing for him. This weekend, uh, whole shot, he's running the pace right off the bat. You know, Mike Kudrowski's going to hound him. Uh, Mike won't give up. And uh, you, dag you just like dangling a carrot in front of a horse. Mike's going to catch it or die trying. And uh, lately he's been catching it. Well, indeed, I would say this is catching him. He's gone from third to second, and the interval is now perhaps 10 yards as Kodrowski closes in, demonstrates why he carries that number one plate. You talk about a focused racer. This is him. Craig's hanging on to him, though, doing a good job here. It is the early going of race number one here at Mount Morris, Pennsylvania. Jeremy McGrath, the leader over Mike Kodrowski and Michael Craig. We'll be right back. Jeremy McGrath tries to hang on to the lead in this 250 Outdoor National Motocross race. The American Motorcyclist Association providing the sanction. The fans in the background providing the cheers as the leader feels the heat. Tell me about Mike Kodrowski's strategy right now. Well, Mike seems pretty content to sit back here and just keep the pressure on Jeremy. And I feel like he knows he's going to get by eventually. And uh, it's not going to happen, though, unless he stays tight right on the back fender of McGrath. You know, Johnson used to do that to me, and it just bugged me so bad. Eventually, you just, you fold. You just can't stand the pressure anymore. You're like, just go, you know? <laughs> is Craig, I mean, is uh, is Kodrowski close enough? I mean, you say right on his rear wheel, but he's mm, five, ten yards back and, and kind of hanging there. Is that well, close he's, enough? he's pushing him. You see, Jeremy just jumped that triple right there and overshot the berm, and Kodrowski's almost close enough to make a pass. What happens is, when you're that close, putting that kind of pressure, every corner, all of a sudden, the guy in front of you starts to ride your race. And when he does that, you got him. Now, is Jeremy McGrath like David Bailey? Is he going to feel that pressure and finally say, I just just go on, just leave me alone? Well, I don't know if he's going to say, just go on. But, you know, it's tough. I mean, he knows. He can hear the crowd, and it, it just it makes his job tough. So we'll see who's going to stand the pressure best, he who applies it or he who resists. It is McGrath out front on the Honda. And Kodrowski in hot pursuit on the Kawasaki. It's down to a couple of bike lengths. And now Kodrowski clearly is looking for the opening. Comes up alongside. This will be the long way around. Oh, actually runs outside the flag, marking the edge of the racetrack back and cannot complete the pass. But that was a heck of an effort. Yeah, well, it's this track, it's because of the off cambers. It sort of lends itself to a one-line deal. And, and Mike just tried to find another line, and he <laughs> pretty much ran out of room right there. He found one. It was outside the county. I suppose <laughs> technically you could argue that he ran off the racetrack, but he came back and made the next jump, gained no ground as a result. And so I don't think there'll be any kind of a foul as a result of that or any kind of a penalty. Here you see that one-line situation. Right. It's very difficult. Now you got... Uh, Mike LaRocco buried back in the pack. And who knows how many slow pokes he's had to follow down that, you know, one-line path. And it's let these guys get pretty good advantage on him at this point. Yeah. Up front here goes Kodrowski inside. Drives across the bow. Almost runs it off the berm. Makes the pass on Jeremy McGrath. Wow. What a move by Mike Kodrowski. 
downhill and difficult. He ran it in there with all kinds of courage and took McGrath's line away. And you bet we're going to want another look at that. But wait a minute. Let's see if McGrath can come back around. He wants to make the instant repass. Well, if he can pass him right back, that's going to throw Kodrowski all off. Usually you make a pass, and you know, like I said, he... He felt as though he's going to make that pass. He did, and if you get him right back, it really messes you up. Talk me through it here. He's got the brakes on hard. Oh, this is so hard to get stopped for. It's so steep. You know, cameras don't do it all, but uh, McGrath makes a good response there. He knows there's nothing else he can do but try to cut back under the inside. But because it's so off camera, it keeps drifting wide, and Kudrowski takes it. Oh, motocross Mike took her all the way to the last berm before you hit the trees and was fairly badly out of shape in the process, but he kept that big handful of throttle, motored right on around. Let's bring in the third member of our telecast team, Art Ekman, standing by down pit side with Kudrowski's mechanic, Shane Nally. Shane, you got a good start. It's led to a tremendous battle. Yeah, we're, we're glad to get a good start for once, and... Uh turned into a really good race right now. He just took the lead on the last lap. He was telling me he hoped uh, that he would have a good start because this is a pretty easy uh, track technically. Yeah, we wanted to get, you know, because if you give up too much time on the start here, it, it tracks us too fast to make it up. So today we got a good start. David, explain to me what he meant by the difficulty in making up ground on a fast racetrack. Well, I think more than fast, one line, I think, is more accurate. And what happens is you get the leaders that take off, and in the first lap, just because of the way people single file out, if you're 10th or 15th, you're already about 20 seconds down on the leaders, unless you're somebody special, like Mike LaRocco seems to be. That's very difficult to make up. The very guy you're talking about, Mike LaRocco, was 11th at the end of the first lap. He overshot the good line there and ran the long way around, but he has come through a bunch of traffic as Nally keeps tabs, I'm sure, on Mike LaRocco's progress to see if he's got the speed to reel in Shane's guy, the leader, Mike Kodrowski. And, uh, well, that's going to be a tough pull, but I'll tell you who might be vulnerable. These two guys, McGrath racing with Craig, and Craig showing some good staying power here. Yeah, Craig's doing a good job. I mean, so far this year, he really hasn't earned my respect as being able to stay up there and battle with these guys and be a real contender, but uh, he's, he's doing a pretty good job. Now he's going to probably have to shift his race uh, program into riding more defensively with uh, LaRocco catching up. Well, of course, you had some advice for him at Bud's Creek, and it appears to me he's been <laughs> listening to what you say on TV. <laughs> he's riding well today. Michael Craig plagued by a lot of problems this year, a lot of injury troubles, and he's overridden the motorcycle perhaps a little bit, trying to make up for those difficulties. Right now, he's third and slipping a bit to McGrath. The leaders have not yet begun to work traffic. The man on the move is right here, Mike LaRocco. Bad starts, his downfall this season, making up for those bad starts, providing some of the most spectacular action of the Supercross and Motocross season. He can cut a trail through the traffic, and I don't see him making very many mistakes right now. Now, you know, Dave, he is a lot like Rick Johnson. The more I watch him, he sits a little bit further back on the seat. He kind of drags his feet and dabs a lot in the corners, and uh, he's just aggressive. He attacks the track. LaRocco, fourth and closing. We're back, Mount Morris, Pennsylvania, AMA National Motocross, number two, Jeremy McGrath, 19, Michael Craig, closing fast, number seven, Mike LaRocco. Is that a mistake, or has he decided he likes that long line around the outside well, there? you know, possibly in the early running, he had so many guys, that, you know, taking up the good line, he had to go somewhere else, and maybe he found a little bit better line out there. At least he doesn't have to follow. There's a lot less berm to work with down there, but... Uh, We've seen LaRocco take that uh, longer path the last two times around, so perhaps it's a matter of preference rather than a mistake. We've already made the point that LaRocco is not making many mistakes. He is really after Michael Craig. Now, he just has fantastic momentum everywhere on the track. If there's a slow corner where everyone's going, you know, six miles an hour, he's going seven. I mean, if you could radar this guy, I think his speed is faster everywhere, and it, obviously, because he's just making up time on these guys. Right now, he is chopping down the interval to number 19, the factory Yamaha of Mike Craig, who started second, slipped to third, falling to the pass of Mike Kudrowski. Craig benefiting from the coaching of Bob Hanna, himself a past champion. We'll argue about whether he or David Bailey was the greater of the two motocross racers, but <laughs> in terms of coaching, that's got to help Michael Craig, I would think. Oh, I think so. I mean, he's 
He's, you know, still pretty close to the leaders. I don't think he's going to put up much of a fight here for LaRocco. LaRocco caught him too fast for him to be a factor in this battle. And so, let's see what Craig will do. Will he try to hold back LaRocco? You see, they are still no more than 20 yards behind Jeremy McGrath as LaRocco indeed makes the pass with ease and moves into the top three. Craig has dropped two spots, but in previous outings here on the AMA Tour, we've seen him go from uh, the lead to the sidelines more often than not. Problems, mistakes, crashes have plagued him. Today's riding a little more conservatively. That's the first mistake I've seen in a while by Mike LaRocco. Well, he got into that berm there, and like I said, he's always, you know, got a, a lot of momentum going. He got on the gas a little too soon before the rear wheel was actually fixed in that berm, and it just washed out on him. Now that's the kind of move that'll cost you a second or maybe two. And indeed, while Morocco was working his way around Craig, Jeremy McGrath moved out, mm, I'm betting, 10 yards, extending his advantage in the race for second and third. Meanwhile, hanging on to fourth, Michael Craig and watching his progress with great interest, Brian Lunas of Team Yamaha. Let's go back track side to Art Ekman. He might have been passed a couple of times, but he stayed in there very well today. Yeah, well, he's just working on trying to stay out there and run a distance today, try and stay with the leaders, because he gets a good start, but then he, like, slows down too much. And if he stays where he is, it's difficult for those other guys that are coming up from behind. And let's focus the spotlight on another guy coming up from behind. This is Jimmy Button, number 34. That's the factory Suzuki. He is uh, best known for his 125 Supercross exploits, but he's given this thing a good ride in fifth spot. He sure is. He put in a pretty good performance uh, for a while there at Gainesville, and he bailed off hard, and we haven't seen him since then, but here he's, he's looking pretty good again. He's a tall, lanky kid. Reminds me of Mike Bell a little bit, uh, dating back 15 years. Those big, long legs make great shock absorbers, huh? Well, I think that 125 probably got in the way a lot, and here he's looking a little bit more comfortable, and uh, he's running in a pretty good spot here. I've always felt that this guy was going to have a great future in the 250s once he got to move up to a bike that fit him a little better, perhaps than the 2-5, and he's running fifth. A top-five finish, I'm sure, would be very satisfying for him today. Here is Kodrowski. Haven't seen him for a while. Let's check the interval back to number two. Yeah, there's Jeremy, and hot on his heels, Mike LaRocco determined to make this a Kawasaki green sweep of the top two and in the process make amends for what has happened in the Supercross Championship Series in which Jeremy McGrath has been absolutely unbeatable. That series continues. LaRocco can't win it, and we talked to him about that before the race today. Yeah, it's a new series, the outdoor. Uh, you know, it's it's a new crown, so, you know, we even know the Supercross Series isn't over if, uh, you know, some people focus more on the outdoor where they have a better chance of winning. So being in, you know, both series right now, it's kind of tough to just go 100% every week. You told me, David Bailey, that you have a theory about uh, not just LaRocco, but about the way the guys uh, approach these championships. Well, I think, you know, like anyone, as soon as you realize that your chances are gone, uh, it's just tough, like you said, to give it 100%. I, I think it's not so much that it's tough to give it 100%. These guys are physically trained, but mentally, to go out and know that you don't really have a chance and give it all you've got. I mean, he probably definitely wanted to focus on this outdoor, and it shows. LaRocco cannot win the Supercross crown, but he can claim this outdoor national title, and every point he can gain here today will be critical. He leads the championship. He trails in the race. He's third behind Jeremy McGrath. This could be a great windfall for Mike Kudrowski up front if LaRocco stays behind McGrath. If LaRocco passes McGrath, and he's about to do that, he's alongside. Boy, he made that look easy. He just rode right around him. It's so weird to see Jeremy ride so well indoors and then these guys ride circles around him out here it's got to be frustrating for him jeremy's now in third spot the two kawasaki's taking the one two spot we'll be right back with an estimated 10,000 fans of ama national motocross cheering him on mike kadrowski the national champion and route to what appears will be an easy moto victory here nibbling away at the point lead held by his teammate mike larocco let's go back track side art ekman is standing by once again with kudrowski's mechanic the second he got last year here is a little bit different than should he hold on right now yeah he's riding really good right now uh, larocco is coming on strong hopefully we'll be able to hold him off but uh, right now we got about six seconds on him What's it like to have a battle of teammates now? 
It's not that bad because we, you know, we all like each other. If we don't win, you know, we, of course we'd like him to win, and hopefully it's the same way on the other way. So, it's pretty good. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty good when you're in front of Larocco by six or seven seconds. Things are pretty good. Brian Swink, sixth place on the moto, and that means he is in hot pursuit of his teammate, the long, tall one, Jimmy Button, and it looks like they're going to uh, be battling for top five honors here before the afternoon is out. Swink also coming back from injury. This has been a rough and tumble season for these guys. Well, Suzuki's definitely had their problems, and, uh, you know, for these guys to run fifth and sixth is pretty good, but uh, I know they're, they'd love to get up there and at least battle with Mike Craig and uh, ooh, big mistake there. That's that's a that section's been there forever. Each year it gets a little tougher. I think this year it's real soft and there's some ruts and he apparently got crossed up in those. Started that problem. That of course is how you get hurt in this game. If you don't save it in a situation like that, you'll high side in a hurry. Larocco has been on the razor edge all afternoon and has not been making very many mistakes. He was 11th at the end of the first lap. As he enters the final lap, he is trailing his teammate Kudrowski. He's been able to chop a little bit off that lead, but he's just going to run out of time. So he's got to gather himself up and I suppose focus on the start of that second moto. Well, you know, I mean, with the start he got, second's not too bad. And uh, it's still good for Kawasaki. And the thing is, is when Kudrowski wins the race, Larocco's second. When Larocco wins the race, Kudrowski's third, fourth, fifth. And so it's, you know, it's going to take a long time for him to win all these motos with, Kudra with Larocco finishing second to gain any points on him. Well, exactly. With that 17-point advantage coming in, the difference between first and second in a moto is just three points, so it takes a long time to chisel away at that lead, and nobody knows that better than Kudrowski. You know, earlier we talked about Mike LaRocco and the matter of motivation. Jeremy McGrath has all but locked up the Supercross Championship, but in terms of his motivation here, it's going to be tough for him to win this title. Sure, he slipped a whole race. He's, you know, 50 or 60 points down on these, both these Kawasaki guys, and when they come blowing by him like that, for him to have the, the motivation and the, and the drive to pick up the pace and run as fast as they go, you know, I don't think he's going to do it. If he has a day where everything's clicking, he'll, he's going to give it all he's got. I'm not saying he's not trying, but that's that little extra percent that seems to be in the favor of the two Kawasaki riders right now. And right now it's all in the favor of this Kawasaki rider. Mike Kudrowski sitting on a comfortable lead, takes the checkered flag and wins the first moto here at Mount Morris, Pennsylvania, some six seconds back to the second place man, Mike LaRocco. McGrath a solid third. Craig is fourth. Button held off Swink to claim fifth spot. Rounding out the top ten, Swink, Dowd, Lewis, Dubach, and Brooks. Let's hear from the guy who again was out there passing people, Mike LaRocco. Mike, you told me before it was a fast track, and you certainly proved it because you had to burn it up. Yeah, I didn't get a good start, and, uh, you know, all I could do was go out there and try and make up time on Mike, but, you know, he got out front right away behind Jeremy, and, you know, there was guys were setting a faster pace, and, uh, the guys I were around, so, you know, I had to ride, do a lot of hard riding. Just too far to go in too little time, the way he was riding. Yeah, he was riding good. Uh, the tracks, you know, like I said earlier, it's a fast track, and it, it's hard to make up time, and when you get out front, nobody bothering you, it's a lot easier. How does the track react during the race, Mike? Uh, it held up real good. Uh, it's not too dusty, and the dirt right now is really good. You can take some, uh, you know, some square off lines and make some moves. So held up good. It's getting a little slippery, but anything you'd like to change for that second moto? Yeah, let's start. <laughs> Had a boy, Mike. Here's the guy that he hopes to uh, to challenge with a better start in the second moto. Kadrowski wins the first leg, a step toward a possible championship defense. Here's Art. Well, I know you'd like to change absolutely nothing for the second moto coming up a little later. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave my Kawasaki the way it is. You know, the, the Bridgestone tires were hooking up great, and, uh, you know, the power was just perfect and just delivering it everywhere I needed it. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to leave it the same for the second moto. <laughs> well, you told me uh, before the race started that you needed that fast start because it was not a technical track, and a lot of people had the speed. You just had to get out in front. Yeah, you know, the track, you need to keep your momentum in all the sweeping turns. That's the key to going fast here and uh you know that's what i tried to do the whole moto and towards the end i had to change my lines because of lappers and mike might have caught me a little bit but uh you know i felt good and i feel real comfortable now for the second moto. well you're making it an exciting kawasaki uh, rivalry here uh, we're trying to <laughs> and we'll be back to see that rivalry continue in moto number two after this timeout stay with us 
Jeremy McGrath, the new star of Team Honda, prepares for moto number two. The established star of Team Honda, Jeff Stanton, out with injury, misses the race today. Hey, his bike was available. Here's Art. This is the state-of-the-art 250 motocross machine. First of all, let's take a look at the very special disc brakes. A lot of parts are lighter on this bike than they are on the street bikes, including the wheels. Knob tires, so they can grip the soil much better out there on the dirt track. Upside-down forks. Bigger portion on the top. It used to be they were on the bottom, but they say this adds more stability to the bike. Handlebars, they're made of aluminum now with rubber mounts. This gives more flexibility to the handlebars so their arms don't wear out as quick. Some riders prefer still the stiff. They say they can feel the bike better if it's stiffer. Cut off switch, clutch handle on the left hand. Over on the right hand, we've got the throttle and the front brake. Gas tank holds about two gallons of petrol. It's important you top it off for the first race of the season, especially because you're not sure of gas consumption. It is also important not to use a new gas tank. The old ones, they've expanded over their race career, and they want as much petrol in here as they can find. It used to be air-cooled, now it's water-cooled with a radiator. That changed about 1981. The 250cc engine generates from 48 to 50 horsepower, and it drives down this chain to the back wheel. Here's the swing arm. It used to be we had two shock absorbers right about in here somewhere, one on each side. Now we have only one shock absorber that can be adjusted three ways, once for height, once for compression, and once for rebound. Tires, well, here for this race today, it's very important that they be wider with a softer compound. And the knobs are closer together. With a more soft track, you would have wider knobs to throw the dirt out. But not here today. They want as much rubber on this track as possible. Back to the booth. All right, thank you very much, Art Ekman. The field at the line for the second moto. Gate is down, charged to turn one. LaRocco start the question mark. He's out of the gate a whole bunch stronger this time. Look here, it's Doug Dubach who leads him to the first turn. 34, Jimmy Button is up in there. Michael Craig, but LaRocco in fifth spot. A whole heck of a lot better than where he started the last race. Number two, McGrath trying to make an early move. Here comes Kodrowski up into the picture. In fact, he is around LaRocco. A good move by Kodrowski early to get his teammate behind him. I got to wonder here if Doug Dubach uh, is going to hold these guys up a little bit. Craig tries to jam his way by. Here comes LaRocco to the outside. Couldn't get by. Mike LaRocco, number seven, stuck in the traffic now, pulls his way through. I'll tell you what, this is a dogfight in the early going. Dave, I used to love riding in the first couple of laps like this. You're all just bumping elbows. You're getting in there and mixing it up. It's fun. You know, that. I don't think McGrath has any idea what's going on here behind him. We talked at the top of the show about the potential for LaRocco and Kodrowski to tangle. Well, they were side by side there for a couple of moments. They're both now stuck behind this freight train being created by Doug Dubach. McGrath tickled to death to get away from all this. LaRocco urgently trying to get around Dubach. He'll try that outside line he developed in the first moto. Here he comes up alongside. It worked real well early. Now he's not going to get around. He's got more momentum. Comes up, takes the inside. Dubach holds him off. Good move. Let's see what LaRocco can do with it now as they come to the sweeping downhill off camber where Kodrowski made the key pass in the first moto. Yeah, that was a piece of cake. That was real nice. Eventually, the inside will come back to you. Note that Kodrowski is right there and trying to do the same to Dubach. He does not want to let Mike LaRocco get away. In fact, Kodrowski cannot afford to be behind LaRocco. He needs to be in front of him. Now, he's got to stay in front of him pretty much every race from here on out. With a, with, he's, I guess, about 15, 14, 15 points behind right now. That's a lot of points to make up, and especially as strong as LaRocco's ride, and he can't count on LaRocco having a real bad moto. A lot of motos still to come to decide this AMA National Championship, but as a rule, the consistency, the dependability of these motorcycles uh, is such they are so bulletproof, you can pretty well count on them running all the way to the end. We'll be right back. Back at Mount Morris, Pennsylvania, watching Team Mike in full flight. Mike LaRocco and Mike Kodrowski separated by two to three bike lengths, running third and fourth. Oh, and change all that. Jimmy Button stops on course. He was the second-place man. Here comes Dubach alongside and around. 
and that will draw Button outside the top five. Big disappointment for the young man from Corning, New York, who had started so well here in the second moto. He got out there right with Jeremy McGrath. What do you think? Pressure get to him? Well, just probably the excitement going, hey, here's an opportunity to, to really do something and get, you know keep some pressure on uh, on Jeremy McGrath. And the, the Kawasaki guy's nowhere in sight, and he probably just, his concentration just slipped a bit there. He recovered well. He's right back to speed. Didn't well, take him long to get pretty going. good, you know, but it's so difficult. When he crashed in the first two or three laps, everybody's still bunched up, and you drop a lot of spots. If he had done that, you know, maybe at the 15 or 20-minute mark, he may not have dropped a spot. Good point. LaRocco up to second, inheriting that position from Button with the error. In front of Kudrowski, here is your leader, and look at the interval. Color me gone. Showtime checks out early as old Mike LaRocco tries to launch himself down the hill there. Stop my heart for just a moment. This is going to be real interesting to see if, once again, they can run him down. Any predictions? David's a, ooh. Look at this. Mike Jones on the ground. The Export PA product actually considers this his home racetrack. Look at the traffic jam behind him. Exactly what you talked about. You crash in the first couple of laps. The odds of getting run over are pretty good. Everybody got around. Jones okay. And McGrath up front continues to lead. And he, like me, is waiting for your prediction. But we're going to have to wait just a moment longer because we're going trackside to Art Ekman with Jeremy's mechanic. Skip any changes for that second moto? It, it sounded like uh, you were busy. Yeah, we made a few uh, small changes, hopefully, to make things work a little better. Um, ooh. Uh, it, it, obviously, it's working. Uh, one thing I can hope is that uh, Mike and Mike race each other and uh, Jeremy gets a chance to get away. What kind of change was it, Skip? Uh, just a small suspension change to try to uh, make things a little better for the, for the traction. All right, a bit of an adjustment between motos for McGrath. Seems to have worked out pretty well. Although I have to think the big advantage for Jeremy right now is the way that traffic fell on the first lap. Dubach got him uh, the opportunity to get away, and now he's making the best of it. Here is Michael Craig as he continues in hot pursuit. Consistency has been the key, I think, the goal today for Michael Craig, and he's living up to that pretty well. He's fourth again. Well, it looks good. You know, it's just a shame that he couldn't have done that in the first few rounds. You know, he'd probably have a lot better shot at a, a good a good finishing uh, point here in the, in the series and hopefully pick things up for next year. Got himself hurt early on, came back perhaps too quickly, has ridden hard, but has ridden her off the racetrack more than once this year. He's hurt a knee, he's hurt a shoulder, he's hurt an ankle. Today, he appears to be healthy. He is fourth on the racetrack as the Team Yamaha rider who inherited the ride that uh, Damon Bradshaw abandoned at the end of the last season continues to try to work his way into the top three. Not a lot of wheel-to-wheel -wheel competition for the moment because McGrath has the comfortable lead, but look who's coming. What was a comfortable lead has shrunk to perhaps 15 yards. I never did get that prediction out of you. Are those Kawasaki's going to catch him now that it looks pretty obvious? Well, I'll tell you what, you know, I mean, the motivation right now it, it exists for Jeremy McGrath. If it stays the way it is, Jeremy will pick up his first outdoor 250 national win. Good point. He was uh, third in the first photo. He can come back and win the second moto here and claim that overall title. Motivation for Mike LaRocco, never a problem. He knows how to pass people. We saw him do it in the first moto, coming from deep in the field to finish second. Now he's got the good start here in the second moto. Let's check in with his dad, who's also his mechanic. Here's Art. Mike, is there any question in your mind that uh, Mr. LaRocco cannot uh, take Jeremy McGrath here? No, he's going to get him. He, he just got to have to get him soon so he can make up a little lead on Kudrowski. We're worried more about Mike Kudrowski than we are Jeremy. Ah, with a smile on his face, nice guy Mike Sr. cuts to the heart of the matter. Jeremy gave up an entire race. Two motos. Oh, look at this. Down the inside comes LaRocco. First time we've seen it all day. McGrath went to the outside. The door was wide open. LaRocco says thank you very much and leads the race. Well, that's weird. You know, perhaps uh, LaRocco, he'd been using that outside. Maybe Jeremy felt like, hey, this must be a better line. Figured he'd take it away from him. And LaRocco just went right to the inside and took that instead. And look at this. Kadrowski is right with him. Kadrowski has closed. He's alongside McGrath. McGrath, he's going to try to take that Kawasaki freight train to one, two. The fans go crazy. It's tight in the top three. Who's going to come out of it with second spot? Give it to Kadrowski. McGrath overwhelmed by the green team in the space of three turns of the racetrack. And boy, these people really go nuts here at High Point. Yeah, they love this kind of action. This is the, the, the kind of racing they want to see. Hopefully we'll get to see a few more laps. 
And when you're out there doing it, how do you respond to that crowd? You hear them? Oh, you bet. I've crashed in the first corner here several times and uh, come from all the way in the back, and the crowd keeps tabs on you. And the louder they cheer, the more it makes you want to try for them. Well, we heard Michael Rocco Sr. say Kodrowski was the man they were worried about, not McGrath. In the time it takes to tell about it, both LaRocco and Kodrowski blow by McGrath and drop him to third spot. So now it becomes, again, the battle of the two Kawasaki teammates, but i got to think all the pressure here is on Mike Kodrowski. If he can't pass LaRocco, he raced his brains out all day today for nothing. That's right. It'll just be even points. Uh, if he picks up, you know, he's got an opportunity to either be, go out of here without anything or to uh, put, you know, cut six points out of that points lead LaRocco has. We'll be back to see what he can do. We're back at Mount Morris. Mike LaRocco leading Mike Kodrowski. Ooh, LaRocco gets her a little sideways. Up the inside goes Kodrowski. Makes the pass. Mike Kodrowski reversing the order of the two team green bikes here as they come back down the hill. This is where Kodrowski made the key pass in the first moto. And he has pulled into the lead again. That's critical, as you said before the break. Six points he can pick up here today. If he can do that every week, he can defend that championship. Still a long way to go in this title chase. Well, I think even if Kodrowski is able to hold off LaRocco here and gain the six-point advantage, that's definitely going to chop away at the lead from LaRocco, but not enough. He's still got to do this two or three more times before he picks up the points lead. Well, it's Team Green all the way. It's been the story of the 1994 season. It's got to make Team Red, the Honda guys, absolutely nuts. They haven't had much success this year. For more on this dueling teammate battle for the title, here's Art Ekman. The 250 title chase has turned into a teammate rivalry. I asked the two riders before today's race how they handle this situation. Well, it's kind of tough. Uh... You know, being in the same truck, nobody has any secrets. Uh, you know, we all do the same things. The bikes are the same. So, uh, you know, you just got to keep to yourself, you know, as much as your own team as possible and, you know, go out there and race your own way. Um, yeah, I think that, that as far as Kawasaki, we have a lot more fans, you know, that are hanging around the truck and stuff. Um, you are right. There are fans, you know, pulling for me or pulling for LaRocco. So that does, uh, you know, maybe tend to stir up some stuff. But I think... You know, we've been a team for so long that we can kind of put that stuff aside and, and you know, do our own racing and, and think about how each one of us feels, you know, and just go along with it. And, you know, the best man wins, you know. We're all, all individuals on the team. We all know that. So I think, you know, we're all adults on Team Kawasaki, so we can handle it. A couple of very fast adults, I might add. Kodrowski trying to defend the crown that he won in 1993. He's won them all, 125-250. And 500, the only one he's missed is Supercross, and believe me, that's high on his list of unfinished business. Let's see what the message is going to be here for Mike Craig. Stay close. That's exactly what you talked about. For number 19, the key is to run with him today, not necessarily to beat him. Sure, if he stays close enough, you know, like we talked about at the top of the show, Johnny O'Meara and I ran into each other and uh, opened it up for Johnson. Yeah, these guys are battling. Who knows? One of them could go down, and if he's close enough, he can capitalize. Consistency is what Michael Craig has been looking for all season. He's found it today, although I'm sure he'd like consistency at something better than fourth place. That will come, although at age 25 and enjoying what many think will be a one-shot opportunity to ride the factory stuff for Yamaha, he has to be feeling tremendous pressure. He said he sold his boat this week. Ever since I bought my boat, I've been doing badly, so he sold the boat. Are you a great believer in omens and, uh, and uh, talismans and good luck and bad luck? Well, he's, he's putting in a good performance today. I mean, possibly he needs to uh, invest in another practice bike, not a boat. <laughs> Ooh, now, be careful. Here we go with the third-place man, Jeremy McGrath. We know what's on his mind. That Supercross championship still to be won. Here's Art with his mechanic. Skip, is Jeremy uh, starting to tire? No, I don't, I don't really think he's starting to tire. You know, we've got another series to try to wrap up next weekend, and uh, those guys are going a blistering pace out there, and the Supercross right now is priority one. Um, I'm looking forward to the when we can make a full commitment for Nationals. All right, that's Skip Norfolk, Jeremy McGrath, mechanic. Let's stay right with that pit story as the battle for the lead continues. Let's get the word from Mike Kadrowski's pit. All right, Eckman with Shane Nally to find out what's going to happen here. Shane, can Mike do it? I hope so. It's going to be really tough. Uh, they're so close on speed and the track, you know, the track's really good right now, but uh, we'll see what happens. What 
changes were made between heats, if any. Nothing. Ah, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. The philosophy for the first Moto winner, who's back out front in Moto number two, will be back to see if he can hang on to the finish. Yeah, the team definitely makes a difference. I mean, we got the four best guys out there. It's just another day for me. Just going out there and knowing you're the best. I don't try and intimidate anybody. I'm out here to win the race, and that's what I'm going to do. You know, if anything, they probably try and intimidate me, but it doesn't work. I try to just get a winning effort going so these guys can go out uh, on the track and do what they need to do. Definitely got to get a good start, and of course, be on the best bikes out there, which are Hondas. Because my color's red. That's fast, because they're mean. Yeah, yeah. These guys have to be the ambassador of the sport. You don't win 10 races with luck. Good lucky, I don't mind that. Good lucky, that's kind of cool. There is no luck. Well, there's a little bit of luck. The CRs are definitely the best bikes. They're just the best. They always win. You prove it. There's a psychological effect that red has over other yeah. colors. The CRs are fast, blazing fast, red hot. Yeah. Just keep them on, on bikes. We're back at Mount Morris, Pennsylvania. The lap's winding down. Jeremy McGrath continues to emerge. As a force in outdoor national motocross, we saw signs of it at Bud's Creek. We see it again here today. And the theme seems to be, wait till that Supercross title is in the bank, and then we're really going to go after these guys. Well, these guys are pretty clearly identified as the two green Kawasaki's up front that dominate this series, just as McGrath has been able to kick butt in the indoor Supercross Championship campaign. Pretty hard to imagine Jeremy McGrath holding back, but that appears to be the case here as the laps wind down for showtime. It's going to be fun once he gets that title put away to see how he fares against the Kawasaki. Well, it'll be fun for him, you know, and I think it's going to be Honda will certainly get a charge out of it, and the spectators too. I mean, it's a two-man show out there, and uh, if one of those guys happens to have an off day or get a bad start, there's really not much of a show. You know, I just really miss seeing a lot of competition out there. Let me ask you about that. It occurs to me that there is one guy perhaps sitting at home watching this in Charlotte, North Carolina, who arguably huh. could get up here and mix it up with those guys, and that is Damon Bradshaw. Any idea, any, not so much an idea or a prediction, but a personal opinion. Would you like to see Damon come out of this rather abrupt retirement and return to the sport? Well, of course, Dave. I'd love to see Damon ride. He's the only guy that, that I really got excited about going to races to watch. He's got the style that I really enjoy. And, you know, I've watched him since he was a kid. And I believe that if Damon decided he wanted to come back and race, it wouldn't take him very long at all to be right back up to speed with these two front runners. The absence of the defending champion here, perhaps a commentary. A lot of success pretty early for these guys as the white flag flies. Bradshaw's career began when he was three years old, and by the time he got to age 20, well, burnout was the problem. He said, I've had enough of this. I'm going to go do something else for a while. Will he come back? Remains to be seen. If he comes back, here's the man he's got to beat. Mike Kodrowski in outdoor national motocross is now the dominant force. He has pulled away from Mike LaRocco in the late laps. He's just putting his head down and running for the checker, knowing that he needs every point he can accumulate to lock up another championship. I think we mentioned in the Bud's Creek show, this guy is a championship machine. I mean, he won two of them in, two, in 125, one of them in 500. Now he's got this 250 title. If he can win it again, that's five championships in six years. That's the kind of thing the factories pay big money for. You bet. You bet. This is a fantastic performance by Kudrowski right here, pulling away from LaRocco. You know, I'm, I'm really impressed. LaRocco's got a lot of speed, and... No, he, he can't hang with them right here. All season long, we've talked about LaRocco's speed. We've had so many opportunities to see it when he got the bad starts and had to come through the traffic. This is a real power play for Mike Kudrowski. This is a statement, I think. Right. This isn't a, the case of LaRocco having to come from behind because LaRocco was actually ahead of Kudrowski. Uh, you know, they, they went back and forth in that first lap. He had every opportunity. He was right there, and he's just starting to slip back. Mike Kudrowski, dominant here today at High Point. He won the first one with a big margin in hand. And now, in the second moto, he's come back to beat the championship point leader. He ran him down and passed him. Michael Craig circulating a solid fourth here today behind the factory Kawasaki's and the factory Honda, the factory Yamaha will pick up some valuable points. It remains 
a great inter-factory rivalry in motocross. But boy, in 1994, the factory taking home all the marbles, the one with the green bikes. Kodrowski headed for home, LaRocco in pursuit, but that pursuit now is pretty half-hearted. The checkered flag falls as Mike Kodrowski sweeps at High Point Raceway, Mount Morris, Pennsylvania, a dominating performance for Motocross Mike. LaRocco second, McGrath, Craig, and Swing rounding out the top five. The first four positions unchanged in each 